Hi there, Medical Wildcats. I'm Joseph Guggenheim. I'm a 1972 alum of the medical school. And guess what? Baseball is back. So today, let's talk baseball. A song that we're all familiar with that's played at the seventh inning stretch was actually written in 1908 by a couple of men who had never been to a baseball game. It's actually the, only the chorus of a song which has two verses. The two verses have been largely forgotten over the years, but everyone knows the words to, to the chorus. Next. So let's talk about the curse on the, on the Cubs. The Cubs were born as the Chicago White Stockings. Uh, their first season was 1876. They were one of eight inaugural teams in Major League Baseball. They won the first National League Championship in 1876. Next. They played at uh, 23rd Street Park, which was a stadium located at 23rd and South State, which is now National Teachers Academy. This, uh, interestingly, was only one block away from the old Chicago Medical College at 22nd Street and South State. Uh, but uh, the college had long moved to another location by the time the uh, White Stockings started playing. The White Stockings became a sports dynasty and they won six of the first 11 championships. Next. They acquired the name the Cubs in 1903 because they had so many young players. They won 116 games in the 1906 season, but lost to the White Sox in the World Series. They won the World Series in 1907 and 1908, back-to-back -back seasons, and then won the National League pennant in 1910, 18, 29, 32, 35, 38, and 45. Next. The story of the curse on the Cubs is the, is the story of two families, the Wrigleys and the Sionises. William Wrigley, who made his money in chewing gum after being a soap salesman, uh, was the majority owner in 1920 and we continued that leadership until 1932 when he died. His son, P.K. Wrigley, then took over the ownership. Next. The other family in the story is, is the Sianus family. William Sianus was a Greek immigrant who opened the Lincoln Tavern across from the old Chicago Stadium, which is now the United Center, in 1934. One day, a goat fell off a passing truck, and the uh, goat wandered inside. William adopted the goat, named it Murphy, changed the name of his tavern to the Billy Goat Tavern, and took on the name Billy Goat, and grew a goatee. Next. He was quite a salesman. He posted a sign uh, when the Chicago uh, was the host site for the Republican Convention in 1944, when they nominated Thomas Dewey. He posted a sign saying, no Republicans allowed. You can guess what happened. The Republicans packed the tavern demanding to be served. Next. The story of the Sionises and the Wrigleys intersected on a fateful Saturday afternoon, October 6, 1945. It was the fourth game of the World Series. The Cubs were playing uh, uh, the Detroit Tigers. They were ahead two games to one. Sianus bought two tickets for the game, one for himself and one uh, for his goat Murphy. There are two stories of what happened after that. The most popular one is that the usher would not let Sianus and the uh, goat into the stadium. Next. Uh, he inquired why and uh, uh, Wrigley said, you can come in, but you can't bring the goat because the goat stinks. Well, the Tigers went on to win the, the uh, a game in the World Series, and then Sianus put a curse on the Cubs and said something like, look who stinks now, the Cubs ain't ever going to win again. The other story is that the ushers did let him in, and there was a short rain delay. Murphy's coat got wet and started smelling bad, and the nearby fans demanded that uh, Murphy and Sianus be ejected. And uh, uh, after that, uh, Wrigley said, uh, he stinks, and uh, Sianna said, look who stinks now. I thought this would be an easy story to check out, so I checked the weather report for October 6, 1945 in Chicago, 
and I'll be darned if it didn't rain that day, one hundredth of an inch. So we don't know which story is true, uh, but the most popular one is that uh, that uh, the ushers denied entrance for Murphy. The Cubs lost that game four and then into uh, the World Series, losing that, and they would not play in the World Series again for over 70 years. Next. They had many bad seasons after that. Uh, in 1969, they were coasting to a division lead going into September, and then they played a series against the Miracle Mets in Shea Stadium in September. A black cat walked in front of the dugout. The Mets went on to win that game and then won the World Series. Next. 1970 to 83 was a particularly bad time for the Cubs. They had 11 straight seasons where they finished no better than 500. Siana said he reversed the, cor the curse in 1969 before he died in 1970, but it didn't seem to work. The National League, uh, the Cubs were leading the National League Central in midseason in 73. Next. Uh, despite having uh, Ron Santos, one of their stars, uh, they could not overcome the curse. Uh, Sam Sianis, William's son, brought Socrates, another goat who was a descendant of Murphy, into Wrigley Field in a white limo with a red carpet entrance. He had a sign that said, all is forgiven. Let me lead the Cubs to the pennant. Once again, the ushers denied entrance for the goat, uh, Socrates. And the Cubs lost their midseason National League Central lead. Next. In 1984, uh, they uh, had some more bad luck. Sam and his goat walked into Wrigley Field on opening day and proclaimed, the curse is lifted. The Cubs went on to win the National League Division Series and uh, the first two games against the Padres in the Championship Series. They were leading three to two in the fifth and final game. And in the seventh inning, the usually sure-handed Leon Durham let a routine ground ball go between his legs. The Padres won that game in the National League Championship Series. Next. 94 seemed to be even worse. The Cubs started the season with 12 consecutive losses. Sam and his goat went to Wrigley Field, and once again, the ushers denied his entrance. The fans chanted, let the goat in. Ernie Banks, who had the name Mr. Cub, escorted Sam and his goat around Wrigley Field, but it didn't seem to matter. The Cubs won that game five to two, but it was too little, too late. They could not dig themselves out of the deficits of losing the first 12 games. Next. In 98, they finished first uh, in the National League Central with 89 wins. Sammy Sosa hit 66 home runs that year, breaking Babe Ruth's record. The Cubs played San Francisco in the single wild card game. They, the Cubs brought their wild card, Sam and his goat, into Wrigley Field, and they won five to three. But then they left uh, to play in Atlanta uh, in the National League Division Series. They left the goat behind, and the Cubs were swept by Atlanta that year. Next. 2003 will be remembered uh, uh, by many fans because of the Steve Bartman incident. The Cubs won the National League Central, and they won the Division Series. They led three games to one in the championship series against the Marlins. With one out in the eighth inning, one of the fans, Steve Bartman in the front row, interfered with Moises Alou's catch of a pop-up foul. The Marlins went on to win that game and the National League Championship Series. Next. So, was the curse real? According to some Cubs historians, uh, the curse was actually a joke started by Chicago sports writers who frequented the Billy Goat Tavern. Chicago Tribune columnist Mike Boyko argued that the Cubs' real curse was P.K. Wrigley's mismanagement and his hesitancy to recruit black ballplayers, despite having Ernie Banks, who played for many years and yet never won a World Series. So what happened? How did this story end? Next. Well, the Cubs finally won the World Series in 2016. And what happened to the Sianas family? Next. They still own the Billy Goat Tavern, which is on the lower level of Michigan Avenue, right next to the Wrigley Building. You can see in this photograph 
looking east toward the lake, you can see the Wrigley Building with its ornate ornamentation on the right and the Billy Goat Tavern sign. The Billy Goat Tavern was the inspiration for the Cheeseburger Cheeseburger skit on Saturday Night Live. Next. So everyone stay healthy, stay safe, stay connected, and let's to get together again virtually next month.